In this video we share surviving the three days of darkness according to mystics and saints. According to the visions of mystics and saints, who will survive the three days of darkness. As both the Old and New Testaments confirm, in the last times a great purification will take place, so great that it is called the judgment of the nations and the end times. But it is not the end of history or of the earth. During these times of trouble, the enemies of Christ will be defeated, and many will be converted. Then, according to Hildegard von Bingen, the world, led by the just dispenser of justice, the innocent one, will lead the church into a new period in which justice will shine, until the time of the Antichrist, who will appear at the end of history. Of course, all of this is subject to debate because it is a question of private revelations and revelations that do not belong to the profession of faith. At the end of that time of tribulation or purification of the earth, there should be three days of physical darkness, as this prophecy reads, given by many mystics and saints throughout history, Anna Maria Taigi, Elisabetta Canori Mora, Saint Hildegard of Bingen, Marie Julie Jani, Maria Agredska, Saint Padre Pio etc. It is about three days in which the lights on earth will disappear and the only illumination will be blessed candles, for those who have them. It is God's intervention that resulted from the violation of natural laws, the rebellion of human beings against God and disrespect for the Church. Also, for lack of charity towards others, breakdown of family life and absolute immorality. Corruption, wars and contempt for fellow human beings, the killing of the unborn and in fact the great depravity of humanity, and any absence of good. What precedes this time are floods, droughts, crop failures, famine, unusual weather, epidemics, poverty, disease, and the reign of sin. Those three prophesied days should be seen as an act of God's mercy and a final call to humanity for penance. In those days, according to the prophecies, the wind will ravage the earth with lightning of unprecedented magnitude. It is also mentioned that fire will rain from the sky and that there will be poisonous gases in the atmosphere. It is recommended that people isolate themselves in their own homes, close doors and windows, and close all openings. Nor should they answer calls from the outside, even from loved ones, because these will be the tricks of demons who will roam the earth freely. Only blessed candles will burn, and believers should also have blessed water with which they will often sprinkle the place, but the most important thing is constant prayer, repentance, consideration of the life of our Lord and, above all, consideration of the painful mysteries, seeking God's mercy. One of the main mystics who was shown the three days of darkness was Anna Maria Taigi, who died in 1837, and in particular received visions of what would happen after those three days were fulfilled. She predicted the abdication of the Spanish King Charles IV, the fall of Napoleon, the release date of Pope Pius VII, and prophesied the time and date of Napoleon's death. Many times she had before her eyes a mystical sun, a supernatural light in the form of a sphere, which enabled her to see the state of consciousness, revolutions and wars, the purposes of secret societies, the rewards of the good and the punishment of the wicked. In this light, she saw a great punishment that would cleanse the earth and the church, destruction, revolutions and renovators that would lead to a victory more glorious than ever before. Because when blessed Anna Maria Taigi talked about the continuous disorder in the church and in society, she used the word revolution. Things will get so twisted that man will no longer be able to put things in order, but the almighty hand of the Lord will fix everything, she said. That great purification that she prophesied would come will come unexpectedly and there the wicked will be destroyed. On August 31, 1816, she heard our Lord say to her, when my heavenly Father gives the order, you will see how Rome will end. He knows that souls in hell are falling like snow now. People down here seek nothing more than luxury, pleasure and pleasure, and allow themselves to be carried away by all kinds of wrong desires. Our Lord showed her the plots of secret societies against the high clergy. And on one occasion, the Lord sent fiery words against the priests who intentionally pollute the altars. She saw that the tears would be uprooted and then God's hand would bring order again. And after he has cleansed the world and his church and uprooted all the weeds, our Lord will bring a miraculous rebirth. 
This end-time purification does not represent the final judgment at the end of the world, but a kind of pre-judgment of the living, the judgment of the nations at the end of time, which precedes Mary's kingdom. Therefore, the purification that God performed at this time will have only one goal, the restoration of the Catholic Church with all the honor that corresponds to it and the restoration of Christian civilization. When the restored Church takes shape, there will be few who will be utterly surprised and full of fear at seeing all that God has done. She said that after the punishment was over, amid the great convulsions of nature, the heavenly age would begin, a triumph so great and astonishing that it left her astonished. She also spoke about the kingdom of Mary, when all religions will switch to Catholicism. This prophecy supports what Saint Hildegard saw, who saw the innocents who will lead the restoration of the Church and Christian civilization. Also, the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary was announced in almost all the apparitions from Fatima to Medjugorje. And Anna Maria Taigi witnessed a heavenly apparition that would come to calm the faithful. Saint Peter and Saint Paul will appear in the clouds, all people will see them and faith will return to their hearts. Saint Peter and Saint Paul will preach throughout the universe and appoint the Pope. And a great light will come out of them and descend on the future Cardinal Pope. At that time, religion will expand its empire under one shepherd. Elizabeth Canori Mora prophesied something similar, and Saint Michael the Archangel will appear on earth in human form, and will have the devil chained until the time of the Antichrist's preaching. As we can see, the three days of darkness are the culmination of the tribulation, but most likely not the great tribulation of the end of history, but the relatively minor tribulation of the end times. Because at the end of this tribulation the devil will be chained and only later will come the sermon of the great Antichrist, Jesus Christ will come down to fight against him and will cast him into hell together with Satan forever. So this supports the hypothesis that the second coming of Christ is still missing. And when he comes, he will raise the dead, the final judgment will take place, the heavenly Jerusalem will come down and it will be the end of history. Finally, once Anna Maria asked God who would resist this terrible test of three days of darkness. And he answered, those to whom I give the spirit of humility. That is why in her own family she founded the custom of praying after the rosary, the three our fathers, the Hail Mary and the glory be to the Father, with the intention of begging for the infinite mercy and goodness of the Holy Trinity for difficult times. And he advised the faithful to look for blessed candles, the only ones that will shine in the dark. Thank you for supporting my channel. May God bless you and keep you. Our Lady, Queen of Peace, pray for us.